A little princess. Sarah Crew grew up in India with servants and every luxury. Her mother had died when she was young, but she was very close to her father, Captain Crew, and they did everything together. When Sarah was seven, the captain took her to boarding school in England. On a dark winter's day, their cab drew up outside Miss Minchin's select seminary for young ladies. Before he returned to India, Captain Crew made sure that Sarah had everything she needed. She had a pretty bedroom and sitting room of her own. She had a pony and a carriage. You might think from this that Sarah would act very spoiled, but she didn't. She was thoughtful, kind, and good at her lessons. At school, Sarah had three special friends. They were not Lavinia or Jessie, or any of other rich, pretty girls. The first was Emily, a beautiful doll that Captain Crewe had bought to keep Sarah company. Sarah liked to believe that Emily was alive and really heard and understood. The second one was Ermengarde, an odd little girl who was not clever at all. And the third was Lottie, who was only four, had no mother, and cried a lot. One day, Sarah found Becky, one of the young servants, fast asleep in her room. Poor little girl, thought Sarah. She looks so tired. Suddenly, Becky woke up. Please don't tell Miss Minchin, she cried. Of course, Sarah did not tell Miss Minchin. Instead, she told Becky wonderful stories and gave her meat pies and cakes. I am only a little girl like you, said Sarah. It is only an accident that I am not you and you are not me. Sarah had a great imagination. One of her favorite pretends was that she was a princess. I pretend I am a princess so that I can try and behave like one, she said. Miss Minchin, the headmistress, always made a great fuzz over Sarah because she was so rich. On Sarah's 11th birthday, Miss Minchin threw a big party. Everyone was invited, even Becky the servant, and there were dozens of presents from Captain Crewe. Everyone was having a lovely time, admiring the presents and eating cake when terrible news arrived. Captain Crew, Sarah's beloved father, had lost all his money and died of a fever. Sarah, one of the richest girls in India and England, was suddenly as poor as Becky. Miss Minchin only liked rich girls. Well, Sarah, she said unkindly, now that you are poor, you will have to make yourself useful. Sarah's lovely things were taken away. She was given an attic room next to Becky's and made to work as a servant. She wore old clothes and ran errands to the grocer. She carried laundry and taught the other girls their lessons. But Sarah still had her friends. Emily the doll, odd little Ermengarde, motherless Lottie, and Becky. Sarah was hungry and cold. She was tired and lonely. But she still had her imagination. She made friends with a rat that shared her attic and told herself stories. Sometimes, Ermengarde visited Sarah to keep her company. Whatever comes, Sarah thought, cannot alter one thing. Even if I am dressed in rags and tatters, I can be a princess inside. Sarah was always hungry. So one day, when she was lucky enough to find a coin in the street, she ran to the baker and bought six buns. But when she came out of the shop, Sarah noticed a beggar girl who looked even hungrier than she did. Sarah thought, if I am a princess, I must share with others. So she gave the girl five of her buns. Well, I never, 
said the baker, staring. One morning, furniture began to arrive at the empty house next door. Shortly afterward, a pale man called Mr. Carrisford moved in. He had lived in India for many years, but now he was very ill. He brought with him an Indian servant called Ramdas and a little pet monkey. Ramdas noticed Sarah almost immediately. He saw how kind she was and how much she suffered. Ramdas told Mr. Carrisford all about Sarah's kindness and generosity, and together they planned a special surprise for her. The next morning, Sarah awoke and this is what she saw. A blazing fire in the grate, a soft rug on the floor, a table full of breakfast dishes, blankets on the bed, and a pile of books. On the books was a note, to the little girl in the attic, from a friend. What Sarah did not know was that Mr. Carrisford was her father's friend, and he was looking for her. He was ill with worry because he could not find her. What Mr. Carrisford did not know was that the little servant who lived in the attic next door, to whom he had already been so kind, was the very little girl he was searching for. One day, Mr. Carrisford's monkey leaped over the rooftops and into Sarah's attic. I must take you back, said Sarah, cuddling the monkey. She crept out of school and rang the bell next door. Ramdas took her straight in to see Mr. Carrisford. As soon as Mr. Carrisford saw her, he knew who she was. It is the child, he cried, and tears ran down his face. Then he told Sarah that he had been her father's friend and that he wanted to take care of her. I have looked everywhere for you, he said, and all the time you were right next door. So Sarah came to live with Mr. Carrisford, or Uncle Tom, as she called him. He bought her everything she wanted and came to love her very much. Becky came to live with them too, and Ermengarde and Lottie came to visit whenever they wanted. But Sarah did not forget her days in rags. She went back to the baker where she had bought the buns and bought lots of food for the poor. I know what it is like to be hungry, said the little princess.